Because if you think about it, bro, we ain't getting played. Mm-mm. No. On the stations, if I, if I was, you know, you know, somebody else, you know, I would be getting played on Radio One and Capital and Kiss and Heart and Smooth mm. and mm. all these stations. Mm. Even Hello Darling don't get played on Smooth and Heart and and Out Capital Gold. That's bonkers, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. So certain of the tunes them get played. You know, you don't even hear silly games, Janet Kay, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. It's like we always have to struggle mm. to be on yeah. the, on the playing field, yeah, yeah. no matter what we do. Yeah, UK hip hop was synonymous for that struggle. Like, yeah, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's like become numb like, to it, almost like yeah, okay, yeah. That's what I mean. It's like Rodney P and all these guys, mm. you know, talented guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, why is it always a struggle? struggle? Yeah. This is what I don't understand. And it's like, you know, somebody like, oh, Ed, 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 we used to do busting. Yeah. And he gets a Ed break. Sheeran, yeah, 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 Ed Sheeran gets a break mm. and now he's on the mainstream. But there's so much guys that I know yeah. that are great singers like Ed. <laughs> Killer Killer Official Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as you need to be, plan to be, you don't want to be anywhere else, trust me. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming HODL Wars, it's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear, from streets to stage, Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. And if you want more, you can go to the Keller Vision app, free download iPhone, Android, for all your street culture sports, this is the place to be. And and today we have an OG in the building, Saxon Original. Hello, darling. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> From Black Eyed Peas to the Skins to his latest book. We'll get more into that. It's an autobiography. We're going to talk deeper into it. The, the mighty, iconic Tipper Irie in the building. Hello, sir. <laughs> Maximum respect, sir. You've done this before, haven't you? Oh, my You've goodness. You've done this before. You, you sound like a pro, mate. <laughs> yeah. You sound like a pro. Uh, some people could actually tell the yarning I go through and try to make sense of, of a guess. With you, it, it's just, it's always been a, a constant in our lives as Tipper Irie. Boy, it's been 40 years now. 40 years? Yeah, so I guess I do qualify as an OG. OG, OG, OG. <laughs> but yeah, 40 years, man, since, you know, my, made my first tune, The Opposite, mm-hmm. when I was 17. Enough. I am 58 now. So that's a lot that's of celebration. That's right a there. lot of celebration there going on there. Yeah. So looking yeah. well, my brother. Looking. Thank you, man. I'm trying. I just come from the old gym. I just had a little swim and a little steam and a little sauna. I try to do that as much as I can. It's hard sometimes when you're traveling, but um, I got a little membership at this gym. I won't give them no plugs. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? And I. And it, it, they've got them all over the country. Mm-hmm. So wherever I'm performing or working, I'll go there. It's like I knew I was going to come see you today. Mm-hmm. So I leave early, make sure I get my swim and then steam and whatever, and then come do the work. We all so. love those disciplines. It, it must be being being Tipper Ivory and <laughs> having that, you know, 58 years old, man. Like, you know, yeah. a lot of people, you know, and salute everybody that's got a hard day job like the rest of us, but, you know, They'd quite happily just sit down. Do you think your career actually determines that that um, that necessity to to stay on top of your game? Yeah, you yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, it's like it's just important you for you because you you come first, you know. Because without your health and your well being, you know, nothing it can't go on and nothing can't work. Mm. So I just try, you know, you know, my best to just try to keep myself as healthy as possible. I mean, every now and then, like at Christmas, Mm -hmm. uh, birthdays, Mm -hmm. New Year's, and envelope opening, anything really. (laughs) Yeah, you have a you have a little drink, a little tipple, and whatever. But most of the time, I try to just tone it down and try to keep myself as healthy as possible. But for my career, it's very important to be on top of things, and I've always been like that. I like to be on time. You know, I like to treat people with respect. I like Mm. to. You know, and I think these things, you know, st- stand you in good stead 
in your career mm. and, and for the future, you know mm. what I mean? So I like to treat people like how I like to be treated myself. And, you know, I think those principles have kind of helped me with my career. Sometimes you make a mistake, you might mess up. You might, you know, you know, put your foot in it one and two times, which we all do. But most of the time, I'm pretty squeaky clean. Mm. There's not much rock and roll <laughs> stories um, with Tipper Irie. But, I mean, I got a new book out. And it's called Stick to My Roots. Bang, bang, come on. And, um, Need no and in my book, it basically tells the journey and tells everything. Um, the nooks and the crannies of when my parents came to, left Jamaica. Them growing up in Jamaica, basically. Mm -hmm. And then leaving Jamaica, coming to England, having me, my two sisters, and us growing up in the UK, dealing with Margaret Thatcher. Mm -hmm. Brixton riots, whatever you want to call it, all these wow. things, yeah. yeah. And then um, from there, it just goes through, travels through the journey of me growing up as a youth and then becoming a musician, Saxon, Top of the Pops, mm. Hello Darling, the success of that and what it's done to change my life. And then, you know, takes me into Lover's Rock, mm. Jungle, being an entrepreneur, and then the conclusion. So that's me. You know, I mean, the story's all in there. If people want to, you know, check it out, mm. they can find out all about what I'm doing. So long in your career. I mean, mm. you know, these are, this is a, another conversation. You've just mm. written a book. Like, mm. I, I guess, <laughs> I guess sometimes you're like, is this going to be another interview? <laughs> what, well, what, yeah. what, what, what were you going to ask me? Yeah, it's like, what, you know. yeah, I mean, for me, it's like, you know, I, you, I don't mind telling my story and speaking about how it all happened for me. You know what I mean? Because my dad had a little sound system in South London, in Brixton, and he was a sound man. So I grew up w within the sound system culture yeah. because my dad was a sound man. Incredible. What and was then, the sound? It was called Musical Messiah. Mm. Musical Messiah. You know what I mean? But anyway, that was the name of his sound. So he had his sound. And every Friday and Saturday, he used to keep blues dances, parties, house parties. And so I grew up with listening to him playing Uroy, mm. Big Ute, Dillinger, Trinity, Tapazuki, all these old school guys from Jamaica. And Jim Reeves as well, country and western, because, <laughs> you know, country and western is yeah, big yeah. in Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. So listening to that stuff. And then from there, he kind of, um, well, he introduced me, to, you know, to Bob Marley, Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaac, all, all the classic artists from Jamaica. Mm. But he also rented the rooms to bands like The Real Thing. You know, you know, you to me are everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sweetest song that I can sing. You might know that. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. It's a come on. It's a big tune. Yeah. But those guys used to rehearse in my dad's basement. Wow. So I kind of just grew up with it around. With it around everywhere. So it's just music. So on weekends, it was it was house parties, and then in the week, the bands, different different bands, will come in. Rock bands, hip hop, whatever. You know. Um, would come in and rehearse. And so I just grew up amongst the music 24 seven and you know, that's, and so it was kind of inevitable yeah. that I would become a musician. It's just the path that I took was like listening to you, Roy, falling in love with them guys. And then there was people like um, Brigadier Jerry, Charlie Chaplin, Josie Wells, all of the MCs, them cultural MCs yeah. from Jamaica, listening to them guys, it just made me want to become an MC. I find artists like yourself interesting because the because you grew up with music yeah. as not only a lifestyle but as a um, commodity yeah. through yeah. your family. Yeah. Your relationship with music is far more precious, far more personable because yeah. you know the power that it can yield in yeah. financial support and your own upbringing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because my dad, you know, my dad was a greengrocer. That was the the day to day thing. But then he kind of taught me how to be a little entrepreneur because they had that hustling yeah. mentality what they had from Jamaica. So my dad was a farmer, 
you know. And then when he came to the UK, he became a greengrocer. So he used to take me to the market. He used to, you know, buy the stuff, this, that, bring it back to the shop. Then I used to have to stay in the shop, sell to the customers, just normal retail stuff. Yeah. But then on the weekends, obviously, we would charge people to come into the house parties. Then we'd cook food, we'll sell the food. Then they'll be... In the house? Within in the, the house, yeah, 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 yeah. Where'd you have uh, a bar and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a bar and everything. So I kind of learned about, you know, a small little entrepreneurship from a very, very young age and the hustling mentality. So we just keep that... I've just kept that going basically throughout my career because you have to kind of make people make money too you know that's why a lot of artists you know they you know I, that's why i have you know tried to find a good manager you know a, a good agent and you know and good team of people around you because once and if you work hard and they're making money they then they're, they're gonna work hard to push Harder. you yeah to get you to where you need to get to so you can't you know you know i've learned that even hanging around you know huge artists like the black eyed peas or whoever you kind of see things and sometimes you think, why is he spending all this money on this or why is he spending all that? But there's a method behind the madness, you know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, if you do that, you know, you put out, it comes back mm. tenfold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even but if some, it's at the risk of your own... Th th this is it. Sometimes, because it's risky, but it's that's life. Sometimes I go places and I say, you know what, I'm going to pay my own fare and I'm just going to go. You know, and I might go to America and I go and sleep on my friend's cat. That's how I got the opportunity to work with Will I Am and the Black mm. Eyed Peas. I was doing a little tour of the West Coast of America mm. and it was $7 to get in, mm. you know, 200 people at the gig and I was sleeping on my mate's couch, mm. you know what I mean? Not because I had to, because it was convenient. Mm. So mm. he said, tip, no, just come, don't stay in the hotel, come stay with me. Mm -hmm. So I went, stayed with him. And then I went to do the gig and then this girl was there. She's like, Tip, you know what? They're looking for uh, Will I Am them. They, they, they must have heard me. I think I did a tune with this guy called Motivate, who's like a DJ. And Will I Am must have heard the tune. So then he just said, like, is this guy in, you know, is he in, is he in America at the moment? And she said, yeah. So they called me. So I just said, oh, okay, I'll go and check it out. Because at that time, they weren't huge. No, no, no. They never had no, you know, no big tune or nothing like that. They were that. still on the, they were kindling yeah, with something, like, they? Yeah, they were like underground. Well, still, they, they had a few stuff going on. I think they had like a little ad with Dr. Pepper. Yeah. And they were still big with the um, underground, underground hip-hop hip yeah, yeah. scene. But there was no way of the love yeah. and all of these tunes weren't. Weren't happening. They were still in there with your project at the yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. They were still in there doing their well. I think I think they just got the deal with Innerscope. Mm. You know what I mean? So I just went down there and they played me the tune. I met Will and he said, Oh, this is the tune. So I'm kind of quick, but I thought to myself, you know what, let me take it to where I'm staying and just write. And so that's what I did. So I took the tune. Went back to where I was staying. I think I was staying in this place called Laverne, which is like east yeah, of LA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I, I, I just went back and I just started to write. Cutie, cutie, make sure you move your booty, shake that thing. And I just kind of wanted to make something that Americans could relate to yeah, kind of yeah. thing, shorty. So I was just kind of use words what mm -hmm. they use. Yeah. Anyway, so I just went back there and I just knocked it out in about an hour, as you do. <laughs> And he's like, okay, I'm going to give you this much money and I'm going to give you this much publishing. So I'm like, okay, it's fair enough. Yeah. Cool. And I just left it at that. You know, you move on to the next yeah, yeah. project. And then I was at home in Streatham, Streff Reeveham. How, how many months later? Like, oh, this yeah. was like, maybe like six months. <laughs> six months later. This is the beauty of music. Yeah. This is just... About six months later, maybe seven months later, I'm sitting at home. And I turn the TV on and I see where it dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay. Mm. This looks like something's yeah. gonna happen here. <laughs> and the next thing I knew the tune went to number one. So I thought, oh, I wonder if my tune's gonna yeah, be yeah. a single. Well the mind uh, boggles, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and then and the next thing you know, it was a single. <laughs> and I got the call. Tipper, we want you to come to Hollywood. I'm like, I think I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got time. Do <laughs> you yeah, think I've got time? So, yeah. So, the next thing you know, going out there, done the video, and the tune was top 10 
all over the world and I ended up going on tour with them, you know what I mean, which was cool. You know what I mean? It was nice to kind of see how the other half live. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, mm. Done Glastonbury, supported Paul McCartney, done some big shows oh my God. with them. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? God. It just makes so, it warms my heart to yeah, know that these so things happen like that. These things. So sometimes you got to cut in. Anyway, the moral of the story is mm. you need to make it, you have to make your own luck sometimes mm. in music. And a lot of the times I go and I do things and I think, mm, is this the right thing to do? But, oh, you know what? Let's just go and see what happens. And a lot of the time, something good happens. Mm. It's just like today, you called me up. Well, you know what? I'm flying out tomorrow. But mm. anyway, let's do it. Well, I can't see Killer Keller. Killer Keller. That's it. Come on. It's Killer Keller. Come on. <laughs> Brother, it just warms my heart, like I said. And, and, and moreover, we all do these things like... We've been here, you know, yeah. so early on into 2024, and it, it'd be quite easy. To be, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going to LA, sleeping on a sofa. I mean, it's yeah. the it's the you know the archetype uh, music moment in anybody's <laughs> career. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, living the dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? No, well, it's not like. But this is I'm saying. I mean, people think sometimes that yeah we're living this mm. fantastic life, but you know. St- me throwing a stone, going to LA to do these small little shows mm. going on the West Coast, and then something huge happened. Seismic. Which, you know, I got nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and so from sleeping on the couch um, just for that project, you know, or just to go and do some shows, yeah. the next thing, uh, you know, Puma's, Puma, Puma's paying for my chauffeur, yeah. my limo, my, my clothes, my this, my that, to go to the Grammys. And I'm sitting next to Jay-Z, mm. Beyonce, and, you know, all these people. And that's from me taking a risk of going to LA to do these shows. I might have grossed maybe four or five grand mm. on the, for the whole little trip. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which is not much. But it turned out that tune kept me in work for at least four years. An extra four years on what you really hadn't anticipated. And it, that's right. On a prof- prolific level. Uh, on a huge level, because I was doing, we we supported like Britney Spears, Mary J. Blythe, mm. Korn, we were supporting rock groups. Korn, all these huge rock groups, you know, it was, you know, Sugar Babe, yeah. Aswad, whatever. It was some huge festivals Incredible. anyway. Incredible. So music, you don't know what's around the corner. That's why I say to the young artists, them, just keep going. If you believe in yeah. yourself, you only need one, you know. Mm. You just need one tune to give you that spring or that step that you need mm. to keep you. If you look at people, you know, people like General Levy, it's yeah. like he's known for Incredible. Yeah. Sister Nancy, she's yeah. known for Bam Bam. Tiny Temper. Yeah. You know, but... <laughs> You know, so there's loads of people. They've got obviously they've made other tunes and they've had tunes that would need. But when you hear General Levy, you think incredible. When That's you fun. hear Tipper Irie, you think hello, darling. Yeah. When you he, he, you know sweet um, Top Cat, you think my love, Miss Sess. Or you know, it's it's you know it's so you got to just strive for that to get that tune. Yeah, that one because it only take one, and then obviously you just build build on that. Try to build on that one. You had a life of Millie lives, though. And and yeah. this is actually cited more recently with Buster Rhymes when he... Yes. Trying to, you know, we grew yeah. up on sound. Yeah. We grew up on sound. Like, you yeah. had sound, you had Hello yeah. Darling. Yeah. You, had, you then yeah. you had the Black Eyed Peas, which sure yeah. was like a re- resurgence of, you know, yeah. of its source. Well, it's, it's keeping yourself... It's like, I guess it's kind of like reinventing yourself, mm. but it's like from the sound system culture, from Saxon... There was just, I was just surrounded by so many talented people. Mm. If you think Maxi Priest, you know, who was like, a, he's like a huge um, lover's rock or singer yeah. just in general. But you, there was only a few of you. Yeah. And then there was Smiley Culture. Yeah. That was about as well. That got into the pop charts with Police Officer. That's right. And then Papa Levi was hu- was huge in Jamaica because he he had a tune called My God, Me King, mm-hmm. which was number one in Jamaica, which was the first UK artist ever to become number one, to wow. have a number one tune in, in Jamaica. And then there's loads of other singers like Roger Robin. They were ducking in and out almost. Yeah, they, well, they, they were all... Rotation. You know, yeah, people were, you know, in the sound. So it's like the sound system culture. And then, you know, there's a lot of like lovers rock artists that I've worked with that I've had number one tunes with in the reggae charts. 
you know, people like Lloyd Brown, mm. Peter Huntingale, um, Winsome, Janet Lee Davis, you know, Peter Spence, all these, you know, I mean, your fan base might not know some right, of Google these names. That, get that down. Yeah, you got all the names yeah, there. Google do. them. Right, they're excellent singers. But in the reggae charts, I've had about three, four number one tunes in the reggae charts with these artists. So from the sound system coach, I've also tapped in to the, another field, which is more like lovers rock mm -hmm. field. But then I've also been in the roots field with Mad Professor, you know, which is mm. more like Irish and Steppers, Channel One, um, Jayu, all these, oh. all these kind of different, different sound systems. Mm. And so for me, it's just music, bro. You know, mm. I just make music. So, you know, if I feel it, I go with it. So, you know, and a lot of the time, you know, it, it can be detrimental, I think, sometimes because I'm not really within a niche if you if you understand what i mean you could say that i'm in the i'm in the dance hall field mm. but then i'm kind of in that field and then i'm kind of in the lovers rock and then i'm kind of in the or jungle like spreading yourself thinly yeah that, that so kind I of think, mindset i think sometimes when people book me it's like if i'm doing a festival you know what i mean it's i can entertain and there's 10,000 people out yeah, there yeah, yeah. i smash up the place yeah if i go to a club and, you know, there's 300 people in there. You smash up the place. But if you put on a tip of Irie geek and just say, like, I'll have just tip of Irie, sometimes, because my, 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 my thing is so diverse, mm. you know, you might not get the numbers at when I play by myself because I think I'm in too much different... I don't know if you get what I mean. I, know exactly. I mean, I mean, too, I mean. too much different different piles. So sometimes it can be difficult mm. to promote one of my shows. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I know no, I think I, I, I know exactly what you're trying to say because I, I I suffered the same fate of beatboxing. Yeah, like, okay. you, I can do this genre, this genre, this genre, this genre. Okay. And, you know, so you go and do a drum and bass thing in association yeah. with a drum and bass DJ. Yeah. Or you do a thing associated with a hip-hop DJ. Yeah. But when you come to do it on your own, oh, it's like, okay, yeah. what? Well, so I've got 20 minutes to beatbox. But, what yeah. am I doing? What? You know? Yeah. How do I sustain yeah, that? Saying that, yeah. Well, this is what I'm saying. So it's like it's it's not easy. People think it's easy road out there, but you have to find you find your place and then try and work with it. But with me, because I think I've been so diverse mm. with jungle, with dancehall, with lovers rock, with roots, with you know, there's a load of different different spaces where I, these I high class I cover. problems here <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you know what it is though i think i think people huh? what they buy into particularly promoters i think is the recipe yeah. the idea you're on brand yeah you're you're your brand yeah and that's the it's it's almost like the spectacle of that first and the authenticity of how far down the history chain you yeah. you know and what you what you embody yeah they say and how do you recreate that in a 30 minute showcase it's difficult because sometimes I go to shows and think oh for god's sake what yeah. am I going to do tonight or which tunes am I going to do you know what I mean you kind of can kind of you kind of work it out but then sometimes you can't work it out because mm. I would go to a hardcore jungle rave mm. and I might be on the bill I'm not on a lot of those jungle bills but and I think, you know, okay, then I sort out a couple of look. I've got a couple of little tunes what I've done with Decline and a couple of mm. other different, different people, you know. And then I'll be there and then and I'll be finishing with it like, are you going to sing Hello Darling? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking like, are you serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you lot, you kids want me to sing that tune. And Down everything to, to a regular pace, not drum and bass. Not drum and bass, no. So that. this is what I'm saying because they've obviously gone online and checked you out da, 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 and they love that tune. They want you to sing it. So, but you would not think that that's incredible. That they would want me to sing that tune yeah. because it's my signature tune. So they would, they want you to sing it. You know. So you ended up, you know. So it's it's just it's different, man. It's not easy. You need remixes of your tunes. Yes, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. Could be, that could be that could be an, another you know thing that I could do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you ever yeah. had? Have you ever had the? Um, I mean, because, you know, you're, interna you're an international traveller, you see. Uh, yeah, you know. go to Jamaica from, tomorrow. Do you know what I'm so saying? My, so my heart goes out to you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be really hard out here in the rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, you're, 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 I mean, when does, when does, 
you know, from amphitheaters to, you know, um, to, to, to small clubs to, mm. well, a great example is what you mentioned about black eyed peas. And, yeah. and when does it all become normalized? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I'm going to go on now. Okay. Yeah. Jay-Z's in the audience. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. fine. I'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. And when's that to get normalized? No, I mean, for me, it's just another day. I, that's what I call it. It's another day at the office. You know what I mean? And the thing is, is to just do it. You know what I mean? Just go in. So for me, no matter what the show is, whether how big or small, for my know that I'm going on that stage, I'm going to give 100% because it leads to, you never know who's watching mm. and you never know where it's going to take you. So I just, you know, so for me, it is kind of a normal way of life. It's been my life mm. for like 40 years. So it's like another day at the office for mm. me. I know I'm, I'm, I'm that way. It's like today I was on my way to the gym mm. and I said, and then I saw your message. So instead of going to that gym, I diverted. Mm -hmm. and right, right, I, I drove straight here. You know what I mean? Mm. Park up, do my little thing. And I'm on time, mm. two o'clock. So that's kind of how I am, you know what I mean? If I know I've got things to do and the stage, I like to prepare and make sure I know what I'm doing, da, 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 and then you go and you attack. Man of honour to the craft, see? That's what it's about. Yeah, you have to, you know, you have to, you know, take it serious. Some people, them don't take the thing serious. They're not in it, you know. You got to, that's how I feel anyway, mm. and I think that's why I've stayed successful because I just take it serious and I... I respect my job and I love my job. I don't just do it for the money. I, I Obviously, I need the money to survive, but I actually have a deep passion for what I do. And I think because of that, that's why now I'm still going. Life with a purpose. Yeah. Like yeah. tools that you've been given from yeah. them upstairs. Yeah, but you use, you, you, you know, it's like anything, you know, if you practice, it's like your, what you do, you know what I mean? You got to practice. Mm. You know what I mean. What you do is unique. So you, you, you but you still have to perfect your craft, mm. and that's what I do. You know, if I know that I've got something to do, I make sure I prepare. So because sometimes people want you to sing songs that you haven't sung yeah. for ages. It's like the I did a tune with Peter Spence called "Girl of My Best Friend." We done like a cover version of one of them old songs, and I hadn't sung it for years because obviously. His song is the cover version, mm -hmm. but my parts are original. Mm -hmm. So then you have to go and rehearse wow. and, re and bring back, bring it back to your memory. So I got it on in the car. Yeah, yeah. I have it on my head for yeah, yeah. I go, when I'm swimming, you know, I'll be practicing. The so lyrics. your recall's quick. So it's on it. So it's on it. And then you, you know, so it's just preparation. What is it you prepare to succeed or, pre yeah, fail, or? fail to prepare, prepare to fail? There you go. Sort of thing. So. Okay, so on that note then, <laughs> let's go through, let, let's go through, because I had the privy recently, rest in peace, Leke Aerosol, um, clothing, uh, good good friend of ours. Yeah. I had the privy of uh, performing alongside you, which You uh, did, sir. We, we, we touched up the place, yeah, man. <laughs> it was the one we got like that, weren't we? Quite, 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 quite yeah. louder. Uh, yeah. I didn't see any sort of, um, I don't know, there wasn't any uh, pre-prep uh, v vocal uh, uh, acrobatics. No, you just went straight. Well, give me, yeah. give me a, give me a scenario. What goes through yeah. your head? Yeah. Um, Fifty-eight-year-old mm. Tipper Ivory. Yeah. We're not talking about early now. We're talking about what has been the 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 constant in your preparation for performing. Ah, oh, wow. I mean, preparation-wise, I guess like from backstage on, from that thirty seconds of. Yeah. No, I don't think I've got anything in particular. So this I'm saying, from I know that I'm healthy, I'm well, I haven't got cold. Mm. I don't, you know, and I can, I know that I'm, you know, if if we're gonna do something, and I'm healthy, I just, you know, if it's only if I I'm not sure mm. about the lyric, but it's like what we did was just an improv, is just an improv improvisation. Mm. So it's just doing something what you'd normally spit. And just and basically sitting on the rhythm, mm. which which was at that time is you. Yes. So basically, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. So for me, pre preparing is just knowing mm. what I've got to do or what I'm gonna do. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it's on the spur of the moment. Mm. You know what I mean? But because you've been doing it so long, 
you know, is just something, I guess, that's in you. You know what I mean? You know, been doing it forever. You know, kina keda. Mm, mm, mm. You never mm. or forever mm. or whenever. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's just the words just come because obviously you, because I've been doing it so long, mm. you know, freestyle for me is pretty easy because at the end of the day, there's so much, you know, it's just knowing words that's going to move. It's just like watching Supernatural mm. or somebody like oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? So it just takes a key, you know what I mean? The remedy is the key yeah. the, of the the, pos- he's, the policy. He's the, an OG. That's that what game. I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like, and and things like that I would do, you know what I mean, as a, you know, like watching somebody like him, mm. you know what I mean? Then I think, oh, I can do that. Love that. Doesn't that inspire you when you see people yeah. really nail that Th- that's right. sort of stuff? Yeah. yeah, so if somebody can do that, then I think, I can do that. And then I'd go home mm. and I'd just look at things in the room and then look at your laptop and, you know, and say something about mm. that. And the, the, the plastic bottle, the kettle, the cameras, the this, the, And then it kind of triggers your brain and your brain gets used to doing those kind of things. And freestyle is like that. You see something, it's just the word before to let you know right, right it's going to rhyme with that mm-hmm. or whatever. And so preparation, you know, to really ask you a question, I don't really have a, a, you know, a real, you know, particular way of preparing backstage. It's just relax. I know what I'm doing. You know, sometimes, obviously, if it's my set, then obviously you got your set. So you look mm. at the set and you think, okay, I'm going to do that, 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 that. But then things happen while you're on stage right and then you've got to improvise Mm. because you're on stage or it might be somebody in the crowd or whatever that does something and then it takes you to another place or you go out there and you think well they're not really feeling these tunes and then you kind of you try to switch it up or or i would be thinking about if I don't think the, the crowd or i'm working the crowd Mm. enough or i'm not getting the feedback then I would switch it up lyrical, lyric wise, or mm. to try to do something to get them mm. on board. Back, then back that in, makes sense. It makes complete and sense. Mm. You, uh, it, it takes a life to uh, have that intuition, doesn't it? In your yeah, music, yeah, yeah, because it's like making a mistake, isn't it? If you make a mistake, yeah. you know, you know, you've made a yeah, mistake, but they don't. Yeah. So the art of performing is to, you know, you're going to have the hardcore fans and think, oh, he's got that wrong. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah, don't yeah, go yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> but it's live. Yeah. So you're not expected to get the tune exactly 100% how it always is all the time when you're live, when you're playing with a band. If I'm doing a PA or personal appearance, then obviously nine times out of ten you're going to do the tune mm. structurally. But if you're working, if you're doing it live mm. with my musicians, then I can. I, it gives you more room to to improvise yeah. and stuff like that. So because they're jamming just, it out with you and it's a vibe. Yeah, it? and you can just if you get tired, you can say drums, you can say <laughs> bass. You know what I mean? Or drum and bass, or, or or just rhythm, and then the keyboards and the guitarists will play. So you play with a whole band? Yeah, yeah, full band, full band. Full so band. what? If, how many ensemble? Um, it's six musicians. So drum, wow. drum, bass. Guitar, keyboards, and two horns. Oh wow! Yeah, so I'd have a full band. Um, like when I I did Reggae Land and Milton Keynes recently, and that's full. In fact, I had two keyboard players at that. But that was fun. It's amazing. So though you know, I play with full bands. Sometimes I do like a hip hop show, straight hip hop show with just me and my DJ. Mm-hmm. But most of the times, I go out with a live band. Who's your DJ? Mark Ross, the boss. Oh, nice. Don't know if you've heard of Mark. Oh, no. well, we're, we're, we're Googling again, aren't we? <laughs> we Google. Mark Ross, the boss, is my DJ at the moment. But I've got a couple of people that I work with. There's Keith Lawrence from My Soul, Mark Ross, the boss, uh, Victor V, who's a DJ, that one of the DJs from um, that used to play with Saxon. I think if he still plays with Saxon, actually. Wow. So there's a few couple of DJs that I use, but it's mainly Mark. Well, at the moment, it's Mark Ross. Nice. Um, moving swiftly, yeah. sacrifice because because yeah. uh, a, a life in music, you know, and we're talking like a, a, a career's worth. Yes, you know the ebbs and flows. I mean, you spoke of Margaret Thatcher. I mean, you know, mm. the sound system lifestyle is way different to <laughs> to you know a, a Black Eyed Peas or, yeah. ba- or a band ensemble. Yeah, sacrifice. Um, 
uh, life isn't normal for artists, is yeah. it? No, no, because you know when I was growing, when I, you know, obviously, when I I had my first son, when I was eighteen, you know, and then after that, I was on the road a lot, constantly, like maybe four, five, four, five. Um, times a week, mm -hmm. especially when Saxon, when 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 Saxon took off, it was like literally like the Beatles, Rocket. you know. <laughs> it was like stratosphere. Yeah. So everywhere we went, there were just girls, herb, drink, <laughs> everything. That was like a rock and roll yeah. kind of vibe, you know yeah. what I mean? So we, because we everywhere we went, it was sold out, you know what I mean? So I had my car, then I had Raphael, mm. then I had cash. <laughs> I didn't learn. And then I got caught again in um and I had my daughter. When when um so my son is 40. 40? My eldest son. And my other son is 38, 35, and my daughter's 27. Wow. So they're all adults now, big people doing their thing. And I've and I've I got my life back again. Well, I, I've got my life. But I had my life anyway yeah. because the mums dealt with the kids because I've, I've got four kids for four different women. And you're just bringing in the money. You're bringing in the money yeah, to help. So, so yeah. I, you know, obviously you're there for them and you contribute and you, 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 you're you there as much as you can. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. My life was on the road making music you know, up and down, traveling constantly because mm. we was out four or five times a week. And then as soon as the Saxon thing, not to say that it died down because it's still happening today, but the tunes mm. came. And then, you know, Tipper Irie and the Colonel, mm. just a speak, got to number two. Then it, then I had Good Child Defini and the Bears. Then I had the Complaint Neighbor. And then Hello Darling came out and <laughs> then... Blew the whole doors blew, open. Blew the doors open. And then from there, you know, it just kept traveling, 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 traveling. Because I saw I'd done the, the, most of the countries in the Caribbean. I toured 52 states of America, you know what I mean? Then you go into Africa, you go into Australia, you go into, you know, Asia and, you know, just in South America, places like Brazil, Mexico. And the girlfriends love it. They love the idea of you being out in the sun. <laughs> while, <laughs> while they're Living not. Like, while they're not, yeah, while, yeah, they're, yeah. We're, while they're in acne. World's smallest violin playing here, yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, so it was, you know, it was that. It was, I've had a good life, bro. Mm. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've had, you know, I have had... A blast, you know. If the father keep me here, let me knock yeah, wood or something. Knock that wood. I knock wood and <laughs> this and whatever. You know what I mean? Um, I've had a good run, mm. you know. And I and I, it's, but the sacrifice obviously is that I haven't been able, to, I wasn't able to to be to to you know to see my sons them you know do certain things. Mm. You know what I mean? What fathers are supposed to be there at? I was. In America somewhere, mm. I was here, there, and everywhere. No Zoom, you know. No, you no. know, no none of that. No, no social no, media no, or no, FaceTime. No social, nothing. No, nothing like that. There Crazy. Was none of that. So for me, you know, that was a sacrifice that I had to do because I didn't get to see my kids them yeah. grow up as much as I'd like. I mean, obviously, when you come home from road or whatever, you 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 get to see them. But you, mm. but there's a lot of things that you're gonna miss. Do you get a PTSD as well when you come back off such a long stint on tour? You mm. know, you I hear these stories like like uh Bono from U2 would like check himself in to his own hotel of course, but you uh -huh. know, he'd check in for like two weeks because he knew it to climatize to not yeah. being on the road. That's it's yeah. quite it's unhealthy <laughs> yeah, yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, right? yeah, no, it's not it's not as easy and glamorous mm. as what people think. Because I you know, if you're driving from New York to Las Vegas, that's like two days, mm. or maybe three. Mm. So the agent and then if you've got an agent that's messed up the tour. Because you're going through the tour mm. and it's all easy. And then you reach New York. And then when you're looking at the schedule, you're thinking, that's Vegas. <laughs> it's like, 
why has he done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But it's already booked. <laughs> yeah. So you're on the road with these people yeah. and then musicians, you know, they ain't got their weed or they ain't got this or they All it takes that. is one thing to trigger. Tr- yeah. And, and it's like, on. We're going to drive for three days. Like, yeah, mate. He goes, well, how did that happen? I don't know, mate. You need to speak to the manager. You know what I mean? And mm. then you're in the van for three days. So you, you stop mm. off, you drive, and you stop, and stop off. And, mm. and they're pissed off because they ain't making any money yeah, yeah, yeah. or they ain't this, that. So it's not an easy road. Mm. As much as I, like I said, I've had a good run and I've been, and I've been, I'm being grateful, so grateful for my career. But it's been hard. You know, and you got put in the hard work and the hard graft to be in a position where I am now, where I'm pretty comfortable. That's what they don't see, in it? That's no. what they don't see. No, they don't see that graph. They just see you on stage and they think, oh, everything's lovely, lovely. And then, you know, the mm. guitarist ain't got his weed, so he's miserable. <laughs> and you got to sit in a van with him for the next... Yeah. Side fills aren't quite, quite to the moon yeah. and the stars. <laughs> and the you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, it's not, it's not all a bed of roses, mm. but, you know, I, I'm still grateful, bro. I could be doing something that, Mixing mm. cement or something that I don't like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I so I'm not really complaining. It's just how it is. It's just the, the music industry. You have a lot of people that are positive, but then you have people that are negative, as mm. you know. And then you have people that are just assholes. Yeah. And then you got people that uh, then you just. But there's a lot of good mm. people out there. Mm. You know what I mean? The good people, and I've and I have come across a lot of good people. That's helped me mm. with my career. In unsuspect, unsuspecting places as well. Like, you see how yeah, you don't know. You never know who you're going to buck up on. But sometimes the least, you know, when you least expect it, you know what I mean? Something good happens. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And music has a way of doing that for me. I've been lucky that way. You know, when I've never really had a time where... I think I did a day job for six months. Six months? What were you doing? Yeah, I was working in a record shop. Wait, oh. back to music. Back to music. <laughs> That's not too bad. Yeah, I worked in a record shop. No, I tell a lie. I was working in a record shop. I worked in Red Records in Brixton. Wicked, if you remember yeah, of that course, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, opposite Brixton yeah. Shop station. I worked there. Philip gave, I think his name was Phil, gave me a job there. Um, and that was even after. That was way after. I think that was in the. I don't know if it was in the middle nineties or something after the success of the 80s. And then it just got on my nerves because people were coming and shopping me. Yeah. It's just you, Tim Irie. What are you doing in here? I was like, I'm working here. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, yeah. It's a record shop. Yeah. It's music, yeah. you know, and whatever. And then I I did drive in for BMW, um, which is basically I used to go to their depot, pick up the parts, put it on a van, and then drop it off to... Thing. So I think about, I did six months of working in a record shop and I've done six months of that. And then I got another hit tune. And then that was that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But that, but in that rest time there, did, do you feel like the world had refilled so far as I, or was it, did it, did it, did it prohibit you? No, because I'm not, I'm a simple, I don't know if you might have noticed, but I'm a simple guy. So for me, you know, so long as my fridge is full, yeah, yeah. I've got a little car to take me from A to B and I can, you know, and my kids are okay. I'm happy, bro. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm comfortable yeah. now in my life. Yeah. And, you know, and for me, success is being able mm. to, if I want to book a flight to go on yeah, holiday, right. I can go. If my car needs servicing, yeah. I can do Why it. Why don't people see life like that? Why don't they see it more often like that? Yeah, that that's still for me, that's that's success, yeah. bro. If I can I can get up tomorrow and say, yo, bro, I'm gonna oh, where do I wanna go? Oh, okay, I think I'm gonna go to Thailand with yeah. my sons. Yeah. And I'm like, boys, yo, my my son's 40th. And I'm like, Mike, got your ticket. So he's a ticket. <laughs> said, yeah, we're going to Thailand. Oh god, I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah. he goes, oh. My son works at Sainsbury's. Mm-hmm. He's a simple guy. You know what I mean? My other son he does recruiting. My other son is a choreographer. They've all got their little, you know, their little, you know, and I live with my son, my eldest son. Me and him, we got bungalow and we're there. And like, I'm leaving. I said, Mike, I'm out. He said, okay, dad, don't worry. I'll take care of everything. 
and they, you know, replace Ooh. it. So it's how it's you crazy, dude. You created a, you created an ecosystem. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, it's that's, fucking that's the way. That's the way to do it. You got to, you know. And I look after my boys, them, and they're good. They're good people. And I've taught them that, you know what I mean? You got to listen, yo, obviously there's left and there's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Do the right, bro. Just do the right one. You know what I mean? Systems sometimes can get you down, but you got to just kind of try to take the right road. But for me, I just I just think that if you can, if I can say, yo, I want to go on holiday to get away from England, and I can go, that's a blessing. If I, if I want to change my car, can change my car if I want to mm. but I don't the last car I had I've had it for 15 years mm-hmm. you know what I mean because it was fine yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's a little BM it took me from where I went to go totally simple so for me that is success being able to move being able my fridge is full my you know I can move mm. if I want to take a break I can do that you know what I mean and and I'm con- you know my, my girl at the time, or a girl now, if I want to treat her, or if we want to go on holiday, if we want to do whatever, I can stand up and I can talk. And for me, that's success, man. That's you know beautiful. what I mean? Having 20 bedrooms, you know, mm. to me, it's like a headache more, mm-hmm. you know, because they end up, you know, getting having to downsize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, that's success, you know what I mean? And right now, I'm in a good place, so I give thanks every day. I love that. I was saying, mm. don't you love that? Tia Tiff is doing good. Um, you mentioned <laughs> the system there, which obviously, you know, likes to play Bobby tricks. Babylon. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, we're, we're getting, we're getting yeah. political now. Well, well, actually, actually, <laughs> actually, I want to, I want to, you know, sur- touch surface on how you remain so playful how do you retain a sense of play and the, the, yeah. for those listening you, you you'll go into a studio situation a stage situation yeah. and you you know the, the turnaround time of dealing with something stressful behind the door you know sometimes that can really prolong yeah. your your creative yeah momentum you can stop it can halt things but yeah. you but you for, for your, your decades now you've ever been ever playful you've yeah. you've not You've resisted mm. from the pressures of these. Yeah, systems. it's di- it's difficult, but you know because sometimes, like I said before, you know you do meet assholes or you do meet people, and then the system is is it it's messed up. I was gonna swear then, but I guess it's a podcast. You know? Ah, it's your podcast. You, you, know? Want... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like it's fucked up, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like with all of the stuff, what's going on? In plain sight. Yes. That's what's amazing. It's like... Dumb isn't it? Can't you <laughs> see what the mayor's doing to our city? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely like, focused. hey, guys. Hello. Do you like this up here? A little bit more. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? It's like, he's, he's messing it all up, yeah. guys. When are we going to wake up and yeah. say, yo, mate, if you mess up this place, we're coming to see you mm. and your family. Mm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah. You're taking a piss. London, I've lived in London all my life, bruv. You know? And obviously, you know, I've stayed in places all over the world, in Caribbean. We've got, I've got family house in Jamaica. Me and my family's got a house there. And it's a completely different lifestyle. But I've lived in London all my life growing up. Mm. And I've seen all the changes and where it's going to now. And he is... They are messing up our city mm. and turning it into I don't know what. Mm. If you look at your driving now, there's like they want everybody on the main road. A mm. lot of the side roads, them, they've mm. all been cut off. Mm. So a journey that would normally take you five minutes or ten minutes mm. because there's all these streets that you could just normally mm. get to mm. and you can't get to them no more. Turned into a rat run, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, well, it's not even a rat run. You're just on the main road in a traffic. 20 miles an hour. Yeah. We're not moving, really. And not, mm. So I'm thinking, well, well, I know why they're doing it, but isn't everybody going to... Yeah. Is anyone else going to... Yeah. Are we... Because obviously you need to... We need... It's got to be a collective. It can't mm. just be one guy. Oh, Tim Irie's over here saying, hey, the mayor's a cunt. You know what I mean? Or, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? He's fucking up the place. Because... But if you think about it, even the, you know, an ambulance. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, first thing across my you mind know, when you hey said guys, it. Hey, guys. Yeah. You know, 
somebody's sick here and the ambulance could get there in five minutes. Mm. But because you've decided mm. to block off all the side roads, mm -hmm. the ambulance now has to go this way and go that way. With all the bumps, all way, the traffic. All these, these yeah. Electric cars, you know, they haven't thought it through. Nah. You know, the electric a lot car them, things it's so stupid. It's like it's unbelievable. They, they haven't thought it through, or you know, when is it gonna? They haven't got the infrastructure to mm. make it really work. Mm. And so, but but I'm just mentioning things. You know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. It's just, bro, we need to wake up. Yeah, yeah. The people that be this country need to wake up and know what's happening. It's like, you know, all these Matt Hancock and Boris Johnson yeah. and all these arseholes, you know, you know, have have we all forgotten? Yeah, 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 yeah Have yeah, yeah. they forgotten what yeah. you know, and you know, when I saw him on um, you know, I'm a celebrity. Yeah, I can't, I can't believe it's it. It's like, really? Yeah. It's like, have you not have you not have I been somewhere mm, yeah, else? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's like some Black Mirror thing, isn't it? It's so surreal. I mean, I don't know if this is fucking up your podcast, but it's like, you know, it's like, bro, the, the care homes. Mm. You know how much people died, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. and these guys have robbed all of this money mm. and PPE and they've stolen all of this and they've taken mm. all of that. And it's like, nothing happens. No, nothing. Just completely <laughs> subdued. It's... It's like, okay, let's crack on. Like, really? Yeah. And so I, as much as I'm playful and I'm that kind of guy, because I try to be humble, you know mm. what I mean, and be that way. But it's like when things are just happening, you're thinking, what is wrong with the people in this country? Are they just going to wait until it's all in place and then be like, oh. Didn't see this. this what happened? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, I didn't see this coming. Mm. It's like, bro, it's happening now yeah. in front of your eyes. You can't drive nowhere. That's why there's all these temporary lights here because they're putting everything and whatever there is yeah, in yeah. place. So, I don't know, bro. I turned to dub plates when the lockdown was on. That's what I was doing because obviously mm. all, all the sound systems were at home. Yeah. Nobody weren't here. So the man then was cutting yeah. all the dubs. So I just set up a dub plate agency. With my girlfriend at the time. What? That's incredible. And that kept yeah. me my income. That's coming. incredible. Yeah, you gotta make you gotta, it's flat for flat yeah. for hustle. Yeah. We're back to okay, then I can't do a show. Okay. So I can be in the studio though. So there's thousands of sound systems, there's thousands of DJs. So set up an agency. And that's what I did. I set up an agency. And I contacted General Levy, Carol Thompson, Janet Kay, Peter Huntingale, all the different different artists that you know name dropping. This is incredible. That you might know. And then I say, "Yo, bro, can you know? Can I do a flyer? You know, so I just can done a flyer, send them out there. They send in dubs. I pay the artists. I take my commission, and I give them their dubs. That's incredible. So it's a just a local. It's like again. It's that survival. You kick it kicks into survival mode because that's what we've had to do. Yeah. Because if you think about it, bro, we ain't getting played. Mm -mm. No. On the stations, if I, if I was, you know, you know, somebody else, you know, I would be getting played on Radio One and Capital and Kiss and Heart and Smooth mm. and mm. all these stations. Mm. Even Hello Darling don't get played on Smooth and Heart and, and our Capital Gold. That's bonkers, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. So certain of the tunes them get played. You know, you don't even hear Silly Games, Janet Kay, or mm -hmm. I'm So Sorry. Yeah. It's like certain tunes. So this is what I'm saying. It's like, it's even, even my book, you know, my book's out. Mm. And I'm selling the book through Amazon. And I'm selling it um, through... The, the, the publishers, they're called Jackawanda. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the publishing company. And um, I'm trying to think of the name of the other people that they sell through. But it's not in WH Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it blows my mind as well. I mean, Mr. Norsky, you know, so it's, same, like, it's same like, situation. even in this world, yeah. like my brother there, Jack, he's got his book. Mm -hmm. Why can't I go and get, so I'm getting on a flight, you know what I mean? And I'm stopped. 
airport, looking around and thinking. So I go to the lady, goes, have you got this book? Mm. She goes, have you got this book? Tip or Irie's, stick to my roots. She goes, oh, okay, I'll have a look. She goes, no. And so I had some on me. So I goes, it's this book. Mm. She goes, oh, wow. And then there was a couple of people that were in the queue. And I went, oh, my God, is that you? I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah. She goes, oh, that looks like, that looks very interesting. Just yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the artwork. I should have brought my book today, actually. But anyway, it's called Stick to My Roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but it's like just art. It's like we always have to struggle mm. to be on yeah. the, on the playing field, yeah, yeah. no matter what we do. Yeah, yeah. UK hip hop was synonymous for that struggle. Like, yeah, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's you like become numb like, to it, almost he, like yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like Rodney P and all these guys, mm. you know, talented guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, why is it always a struggle? struggle? Yeah, this is what I don't understand. And it's like, you know, somebody like oh Ed Ed. Ed, we used to do busting. Yeah. And he gets a Ed break. Sheeran, yeah, 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 Ed Sheeran yeah. gets a break mm. and now he's on the mainstream. But there's so much guys that I know yeah. that are great singers like Ed. Yeah. And they they play great guitar and they sing mm. and they, 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 they. But maybe it's just the music. Even a group like the Skins. Yeah, yeah. Love the Skins. Man. It's like three piece, yeah. four piece band, mixed race girl, yeah. three white guys, but they play reggae. Yeah. And, and bang out reggae as well. I've seen them cut yeah. songs are wicked. The, and they, they, they get in a, a fan base. Mm. they got a decent fan base. Yeah. But why ain't they on... Why ain't they in mainstream? It's like, it's like you've got to be aggressive to get anywhere. Like, you've got to be... You know, the skin should be, you know, huge. Yeah. Because they're... Tal- they, you know, they, they'll sell out the grand in Clapham Junction or... Mm. The, the um electric in Brixton, yeah. they sold that out the other day. And I think, you know, I think that may be 800 people. Oh, see. Right? But bands Completely like off that, radar as well, in- incredibly so. Right? But that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm just trying to get to the, the injustice of the fucking yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Because groups like that, they're playing, they're making good music and they're bloody talented. You know, the drummer plays his drums and sings. Marcia can play everything. Yeah. And sing. Josh plays the guitar, got my man plays the bass. Josh is a great DJ as well. Yeah, DJ. They, they, so it's like good groups like that, but why aren't they getting mainstream exposure that they should be getting? Mm. Because, you know, what is it? The music that they're playing? Is it because it's reggae? Whatever. But it's always, but if it's hip hop, UK, reggae, UK, it's a struggle. Yeah, always. And that's the problem that we have to do. But for me, uh, I'm international. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a diversify. I mean, you know, and, uh-huh. and jungle, nah, jungle nah, drum nah, and joking. bass, to be fair. No, no, I'm no, joking. no. You're, but you know, it's true because mm. what we're talking about here is a um, multi dynamic artist, which you are. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned drum and bass as, as part of your portfolio. Yes. Now, yeah. jungle drum and bass have a, a unique position. I don't think they ever, they, mm. they, they never succumbed. They stuck to their guns. Yeah. They, they they kept in house a lot of what yeah their, yeah yeah. Their they core don't values let a lot were. of people in no. because I don't is that because I don't really get that much jungle bookings. Mm. Smacked it that night though. Yeah, but that's yeah. what I'm saying because like Ragga Twins, you know, I'm very good friends with Demon from Ragga Twins. Yeah, it's a good man. And he's like, tip. It's like you just in the scene. Yeah. It's like you've just slotted in the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's without being in the scene. You know it was like, I mean? bro, it's like, I mean, big up, big up, D Man. Um, yeah, big up, Ragga Twins. Yeah. Big up everyone that was there. But there yeah. was, but Tip Up being in the venue was like, yeah. The, 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 Levels. The, yeah, just status was just like, yeah. yo, yo, you know who's here? Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah, that yeah. kind of conversation. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know who's yeah. here? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it's yeah, almost like you're yeah, kind of. Yeah. Th- but I'm just humble, bro. I'm, 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 you know, they asked me, I said, you know what? It's a good thing. I'll come. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I just slot in. I can slot into any scene. Oh, whether it be garage, um, jungle, dance, or whatever, roots. I know to adjust and adapt mm. to wherever the beat is. Mm. You know I mean, it's just like, I didn't know what you was going to beatbox. I'm just mm-hmm. kind of like, okay, let me try to sit on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it worked a charm. It worked, worked a charm. <laughs> so, you know, so, brother, it's it's not easy, man. But the jungle scene is a good scene. And mm. they've got, a, they, they, you know, They've got solid fan, you know, mm. hardcore fan base. 
and you know the Ragged Twins and Navigate are and oh, all these Navi. brethren them. Navi. They've managed. They've managed to sustain mm. a career just like I have mm. in my field. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's always a struggle because I've had hit tunes in the mainstream and I've had many hit tunes in the reggae charts. Mm. But, you know, obviously, as you get um, older, the people that are my age are older. Mm. So they're not coming out as much as more anymore. They've got other responsibilities, other mm. grandkids, this, that, mm. what, whatever. So it's kind of like now... It's reinventing yourself to try to get a younger audience into what we're doing. So that's kind of similar to what General Levy does. Yeah. You know, because if you go to a General Levy show, it's not <coughs> people that look like him that's no. at the show. No. It's young, Especially when you white Especially Asia and whatnot, you know, like uh, to see how far the music and culture has gone from yeah. these shores right the way through to, yeah. to the other sides. Yeah. Another person, actually, a couple of people, actually. I mean, um, Daddy Freddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sweetie Irie, who has he's, managed to... He's crazy, man. Crazy. But he, he's Incredible. like somebody that is like my, you know, somebody that I admire. He is so and good he, at reinventing himself. They call me Godfather. Yeah. You know what I mean? Them guys, you know what I mean? And with Sweetie, you know, obviously he hooked up with the gorillas. Yeah. You know, who are huge. Yeah. And he's managed to get into that little niche there. Yeah. And that's niche. So that's what I'm saying. It's finding your mm. niche. Which takes you to the next, next elevation. Level. That's right. And that's what he's done with the gorillas because I think he'd done a tour with them recently. Mm. And, you know, you tour with somebody like that, it's a life-changing situation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Financially, it's good because obviously you're touring with a huge band. So, you know, if, he, if you can get yourself in that situation or that, you know, but he's had a couple of tunes that, so I'm saying it's mm. finding them tunes. It's all that, that sweet moment. Yeah, finding the tune, bruv. Mm. You know? How often do you go to studio? How often do you go in the studio? Well, I've got a studio at home. So, so it's daily? Like daily, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a little studio at home. So daily I go in there. How many tunes do you have on the go at once? Um, maybe three, four. Really? Yeah. And you alternate what? per day? Yeah, what I do is a lot of the time nowadays, I don't really create from scratch. Mm-hmm. most of the tunes that I'm working on is people sending me beats. Brilliant. So people send me the beats. I don't like that one. I won't use it. Mm-hmm. If I like that one, I ask them what their budget is. If the budget is decent, I get to work. Mm-hmm. Get the money from them, start to write, send it back. Nine times out of ten, they like what I do. Like, talk yeah. that shit. Talk that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Nine times out of ten. Uh, sometimes, you know, you get the uh, a few that are picky. Mm. And uh, uh, I won't mention any names. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah, dub pistols. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Barry. Come on, give me some money. Come on. Yeah, but, <laughs> hi, Barry. Yeah. Um, some of them, are, you know, you send them the idea, they send it back. You send them the idea. Mm. But if they're paying, I don't mind. Mm-hmm. And then then the next thing is to do then is to go into the studio with them so they can tell me mm-hmm. what they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no point in me creating and they don't like it and then you creating and they don't like it. So <laughs> next time I'll be there with you mm. in the studio so then you can tell me what, what you, you tell mm-hmm. me what you want, brother, mm-hmm. and, I'll, and I'll execute it. So, but I do, that's, at, at the moment, that's how I'm working. People send me beats, they send the budget, I write the songs, send it back to them. So it's easy. And, you know, sometimes you create, I do, you know, sometimes I do create from scratch, but it's not been recently. It's just been, it's like I'm doing, when I go, when I leave tomorrow to go to Jamaica, I'm going to go home to my house there and I'm going to just set up my studio there. <laughs> so I'll have pretty much one of these, mm-hmm. um, laptop, sound card, headphones, a good mic and then King Jammies I'm doing an album with King Jammies from Whoa. Jamaica and um, so I'm gonna just I've done two tracks already wow. and he sent me I don't know about 15 or so rhythms so I'm just gonna go sit and write wow. drink coconut water eat good food and sit and write yeah, my heart bleeds for you if yeah. it's <laughs> it's freaking, it? so it's terrible isn't it never mind mate I'll leave you yeah, yeah, yeah. in the rain <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> 
Save but nah, save but your that's... ticket stubs or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but nah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm on next, bro. Writing, just gonna go write, sit, write, and that's how I do it. Anyone you want to work with? Anyone that you, you, you know? There's I'd been... like to work with Dr. Dre. Yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? That would be good oh. if I could work oh. with Dr. Dre. Um, Can you imagine that? That'd be so amazing. That'd, that'd be, be amazing. Right. Yeah, because I know that either, obviously the beats will be good, and I know I can write, man. I know I can f- come up with something that will be epic. What about so, Buster? What about Buster? I'd like, love to the... write. I'd, I think I sent him a message, but I've not heard anything. But I know he's on tour or whatever. Mm. But um, yeah, it would be nice to work with Buster Rhymes, Dr. Dre. That'd be crazy. Um, Sly, Sly mm. Dunbar from mm. Sly and Robbie. Wow. I know Robbie's gone now, but I'd like to work with That'd Sly. That'd be incredible. Um, um, who else? There's an artist from Jamaica called Agent Sasko. Okay. I'd like to voice a tune with him. Wow. If possible. Budjo Banton would be nice oh. to do a tune with. Come on. So if you're listening, Budjo, Come on, Daddy you know it. Yeah. UK Godfather, Mwando, and yeah. the Link Up and do a tune. <laughs> it must be really kind of, you know. Yeah, be everyone nice knows who Tipper is, so it's like, you know, what? Well, you'll know. Like, just, it's a knock-knock well, knock situation, isn't it? Well, with some of them, you knock and you ask them, you know. You know, it's it's funny. Jamaica's strange. The, the, the respect... The respect is there from a lot of people, but a lot of the... This is why it kind of irritates me with the UK, because when we go to America and Jamaica, Mm. you know, they hear of us, Mm. but the respect is not... There's a few people that may give you that respect, but a lot of the the radio and maybe back in the day, I found... Back in the day, in the 80s, when I went over there, the radios then was very receptive. Mm. Da, 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 da. Maybe because Hello Darling was big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe that might have yeah, something might to do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now I find there's people like Muta Baruka. Um, there's a guy called Steve James in Jamaica and a few people them that will play UK mm-hmm. music, one and two. But a lot of the stations out there, you got to pay... To pay, play, to play. payola okay. they call it yeah but they don't really support our music so. and then i mean what's it like for uk hip-hop in america oh, I, I does mean, it get played no i don't there you go so this is what i'm saying but when these artists come to england then it's fanfare it's fanfare tree. and everyone drops their diss and they, they, they queue up round the street and they did yeah. that that yeah. that and some of these guys, you know, no disrespect, man, but I listen to some of the content. But that's what they're feeding the youths, them the fuckery. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. They're feeding the youth them, and that's what they get into. Because obviously people want to, you know, um, people don't want to be, dan- young kids don't want to be dancing to their granddad or whatever, whatever. I get that. But it's like, people are like sheep. People get into what they're fed. So if you feed them the shit, then that's what they're going to get into. Yeah. I, I, I'd also say, just to add value to that, is, yeah. no, they don't want to be, at a certain age, they don't want to be dancing to the same things that their parents grew up on or yeah. what the, their parents are listening to now. Yeah. But inevitably, and this is the beauty of nostalgia, is what they're listening to now suddenly becomes dated and the things that their parents listen to suddenly becomes respected. Yes. And it's funny that, isn't it? Yeah, so all yeah, of a sudden, yeah, yeah. the things that you may not have liked as a kid, you, you suddenly appreciate a lot more because yeah. it's got more um, uh, longevity to it. Yeah, but I find, you know, when I, I, did, I went to Mexico um, last week or the week, about I think two weeks ago, I was yeah, in Mexico. I remember. Yeah, Did a concert out there. And there's about 800 people there, nice show. And then there was, the other one was maybe about three, 300 people. Mm. And the show, there were kids there at the first show. And they were, you could, you could just see them loving it, yeah. lo- loving the music. So I'm thinking, look at that. You know, look how young them be. And they're getting into it. So I, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, you know, we just need to feed the youths them something of substance. And they'll buy into it. And even at some of my shows, you know, people will come to my shows, parents come to my shows with their kids. Mm. And they said, oh, my kids, they love this, you know, Tip. They so love this. They, they, they. So I know mm. if the youths then were fed the positive things, because I'm not just saying it from me. There's, you know, positive artists like Chronics and 
protege, I guess, and Leela IK, and um, there's that crew, and Jesse Royal, and, mm. and Taurus Riley, and all these, you know, kind of younger artists, and then younger than them still, you know what I mean? And you find they just promote the slackness, mm. and the, the gun lyrics, and the killing and shooting and this and that and they feed the youth it's all one that. dynamic isn't it it's one yeah, dimensional it's boring man and they just feed that to the kids them and that's what they grow up you know and the thing is it be it's like an art it's like skeng I don't know if you've heard yeah, of it yeah 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 right it's like they ain't even got respect for their the people them that's coming to see them yeah 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 you know what I'm saying? And this is what's frustrating because I see them, they come out and they're bossing the champagne and then we're to yeah. and then we're dashing, they're taking Molly or what. It's up to you what you want to take. It's up to you. I don't, I don't know. It's not none of my business. If you want to do that, that's fine. It's up to you. Anybody can do whatever they want to do. But if somebody pays their good yeah. money, yeah. if they've just spent 22 50 to see you, bruv, yeah. at least sing the tune. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Do you know what I mean? It's like at least yeah. sing the tune because the, the second half of the tune might be your favourite yeah. part of the tune. Yeah. And you don't. And they come and they sing a chorus, and maybe one verse, and then it's the next tune. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's telling of the scene that it's become. And then it's like the sound system culture with, you know, it's like, okay, you go out with your missus and you want to hear a tune. So you play 20 seconds of mm. a tune. And then you play the next tune. Mm. And then you play another 20 seconds and then you play the next tune. Mm. So how are you supposed to dance to that then? You can't get into a flow. Well, the, right? You, so you can't... So it's, to me, it's like, I just don't... If you go to Channel One, you, 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 the man is playing the tune and you know, you're hearing the tune and mm. you just come to the second part of the tune. Okay, I like this part mm. of the tune. It's nice. You mm. know what I mean? And then, okay, I'm going to hear the version now. Okay. Mm-hmm. This feels good too. Mm. And then they play another tune. Mm. But if you're out and you want to dance with your missus, for instance, mm. and they play a nice tune, you dance it with your girl, mm. and you know, you can't do that for 10 yeah. seconds. No. You can't if you, get into the mindset, you can't get into the rhythm. So that's why I can't really get <laughs> into it's change. Mm. No, I don't mind change, but bruv, come on, man. Change for the better. Yeah, and to me, it's not. It's fuckery. Really. It's funny you say that. Um, it's it's because I I, I watched this Ice T interview I like the other day. Guy. Yeah, he's fucking crazy. I'd like I'd li- that is one brother you've just yeah. mentioned. Another brother that I'd like to just meet him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's a he talks, he's a case study. He's a he, case study in himself. Yeah, him talk sense. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. what I like about him. Yeah. Him chat sense and he's real. Yeah, and the real is not no. You know, you can tell the man's lived the thing. Yes. And him talk it oh it yeah. is. You know. Just trust everything. So he's, he's he, total trust in what he says. You know, he's he's lived life. But anyway, you were saying nice tea. No, he's very much mirroring everything we just said there. And yeah. um and he, he said that uh you know, the the levels in which we strive, and I say it collectively, mm. <laughs> we yeah. strive to perfect what we do, to yeah. pass on a kind of a sense of tradition uh, and a, a code of this is how it's, you know, it's roadmaps of how you do things. Yeah. Um, you want to pass on that knowledge, but when that knowledge isn't being fed through, it's yeah. quite heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, it's depressing because, you know, somebody like Ice-T, you know that he comes from the streets, he it's, 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 it doesn't pretty up where he's from. No. He knows what he's from. He knows where he's gone through. He knows what he's had to do yeah. to achieve. But there's a time when you got to be sensible. Yeah. And he knows really. Okay, yeah. I can make a. You know, I don't. I'm not an actor, but I've learned to become an actor. Yes. Because when you yeah. started beat bopping, you didn't just wake up one day no. and be the talent that you no, are no, now. No, no, no. You know, think and it that's, through. Yeah, yeah, you have to think it through. But then you. You practice yeah. and practice and yeah. think, oh, that sounds good. You might have watched Dougie Fresh or yeah. whatever and learn and pick up bits and pieces mm-hmm. and, and whatever, you know. But, and so, and, and it's the same with me in my craft, you know. I mean, if I, that's why for me, it's like second nature. So sometimes my show, I don't have to think about it because I know the songs I'm going to do, just go and do it. The template's all there. It's all there yeah, yeah. and it's in the head. So, you know, but it's, you know, I don't like the, the the I don't like the shit, bro. What they're feeding the youths them, and mm. it's not. 
it's not a good example. No. You know what I mean? You but it also regionalises as well. How's people meant to get international claim when they're just talking to the region? You know what I mean? Like, they're talking in this dialect mm. that doesn't always translate past yeah. what for gap. Well, there, well, there you go. So, and it's the same, you know, if you, you know, if, if certain artists, you might be big in your little... Borough. Borough. Yeah. Exactly. But... We want to try to reach the massive. We want to try to, yeah. you know, so our little youths that are coming up and they see my man come out and he might just yeah. jump in every year and, yeah. blah, blah, and they've paid, you know, and sometimes I think, good. Yeah. You know, it's all of them, because you people there, you're there, you spent your £22.50, yeah. your £25 yeah. to come and watch this stranger that Serves you don't you right, know. yeah. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, so <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, because you ain't looking after your own. Yeah. You ain't coming to spend that money to see Tipper Irie or to see yeah. Rodney P or to yeah. see, you know, whoever. You know what I mean? You're spending to, to cut this guy that you don't know from Adam. Da, 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 da. Not to say that you can't embrace people's music, but, you know, Chronics makes good music. Yeah. So I pay my money and then I know he's going to turn up with his band and, and he's going to kill it and he's going to sing the tune from yeah. beginning to yeah. end so that I can, you know, when I'm nodding, I can dare yeah. and I can feel that, you know, this is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But when somebody's coming out and it's like, okay, well, what did you say? Mm. Okay, then. But ain't you going to sing that part of the tune then? Mm. Okay, then. All right. Next tune. Okay, then. And then he does the same again, and then half an hour they're gone. Yeah. And you've just spent twenty five, thirty pound for yeah. what was that? Um, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've missed it. Yeah, yeah. Eight pound a drink as well. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, man. I'm just you know sometimes I just have to tell you how it is, bro. I'm not impressed. You know, a lot of them I'm just not impressed, man. They don't mm. do nothing for me. You know, I'd rather go and I don't know. But you know how important it is for the likes of me and a lot of people who are watching mm. is to know that you do feel that and that your moral compass is definitely set to, uh, mm. uh, you know, integrity that you've yeah. helped forge. Like, we yeah. want, we want, we, we all because want to believe in I, our artists, you know, right? Look, I'm not, you know, you know, you, people have to have fun. Yeah. People come out to enjoy themselves. Yeah. So it's not about doom and gloom or conscious lyrics all the time there's nothing wrong with party tunes mm. and party things but do it with tastefully mm. and respectfully and don't diss women because you know women mm. are the mothers of creation so we need to respect them mm. and respect ourselves and respect each other and you, a lot of these guys them that's dealing with certain of the, the lyrics them and whatever they got mums and they got sisters. Mm, mm, mm. And how they're telling people to treat their, you know, women, mm. they they ain't going to want a, a man to be treating their no. sister like that. No. Or, sorry, I'm putting away from the mic. They ain't going to, you know, they ain't going to want, they ain't going to want nobody to diss their mum mm -mm. and they ain't going to want nobody to disrespect their sister. Mm -hmm. So why are you pushing that narrative yeah. on the youths, them to go and do that to somebody else's yeah. daughter? You know what I'm saying? it resonates. So, it goes. It goes a long way. So that's why, that's what I'm about, bro. I, I, I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I'm not going to push that, you know. When we was young, we may, you know, you say you may, you lick out against certain things, you know what I mean? And even now, you know, I just try to keep it real on, it's not even, I don't know about that word, but I just try to stay true to what I believe in, you know what I'm saying? That's what people like about the, the tip of Irene. Um, <laughs> What's your future then? So they got the book. What else is going on? Uh, my future's bright. Yes. We certainly it's start not orange. in Jamaica. Let's, let's just start in Jamaica. Shall we? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. No, um, brother, I, I've got two albums out right now. Yeah. One is called I'm an African. Wow. Yeah. And that's out right now. Doing very, it's doing okay. You know what I mean? And then I've got one called The UK Dancehall Pioneer. Wow. You know, which is like a duet album with me and a lot of... Collaborations. Collaborations. Oh, wow. That right? sounds awesome. So I've got I'm an African is out now and UK Dancehall Pioneer is out now. And I've got my book, Stick to My Roots, um, Tipper Irie Autobiography 
is out now. If you want to find out anything about Tipper Irie, it's very simple. You just go to tipperirie.com. Yeah, you go to tipperirie.com and everything is there. Everything what I'm doing, the social media, the, the, the latest interviews, the latest albums, everything is at my website. You can just go to tipperirie.com. Um, my next project is with King Jammies. Um, he's given me some rhythms, so I'm going to go to Jamaica tomorrow to start to write. Um, I've got loads of gigs coming in. Yay! Yeah, yeah I, I'm, when I get back from Jamaica, I'm, I'm in the West End at um, Greek Street. Um, I think it's called the House of Barnabas, Ooh, but wow. it's on the website. Um, it's sold out, actually. It's a book meet and greet oh brilliant yeah wicked for, for my book so yeah, that's yeah. happening and then i have got in july i've got three festivals one of them is called reggae summer blast one of them is is ipswich sunny ipswich festival <laughs> and um another one is called the fate music festival with rampage it's tip of Irie and the band oh, and rampage, rampage. wow yeah. yeah so i'm doing that there's some so july is well. coming in rampage things rampage. are coming in i'm gonna be at the notting um club not in a theater on the 13th of july that just come in actually wow. um playhouse that's it not in a playhouse 13th of july tip of Irie, mikey tough friendly fire band live and a load of holy other artists as well so july is already stacked up wow um what else have i got um i'm gonna be in deal um in february um that is in, on the coast somewhere deal mm. it's called d-e-a-l mm -hmm. deal. the lighthouse that's ah, it i'm playing at the lighthouse okay. um yeah so look loads of gigs are coming in you know, that's what I'm on. The book's still out there. I'm going to be doing a lot of book um, um, meet and greets and just promotion, man. Just pr promote, 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 promote my, my albums that I've got out right now. That's it for the immediate, you know. So it's still it's still active, bro. Reputation for CJ, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Much respect, my brother. Much respect, man. Oh, long over Much you. respect. Absolute yes, man. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, yeah, man. This lot are going to be gushing too. Man, wherever you are, make sure you go and check out some Tipper Irie in your life. There's loads of different uh, varieties and means in which you can discover the talents. And uh, whether it's audible, visible, well, uh, or readable, it's all there. Uh, <laughs> Killer Keller podcast. I like him was out of fashion, all right, people. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither did they, all right? Don't talk to an and I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Easy. Peace. Wow. <laughs> that was a All right, brother. Oh.